Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at how many different password combinations we can make um, with the following criteria. So a password consists of two lowercase letters followed by three single digit numbers followed by one uppercase letter. So what we are going to be using for this, every time I say a lowercase letter, I'm talking about the US alphabet um, where there are 26 letters. And because we're talking about single digit numbers, since we have zero through nine, there are 10 total single digit numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, um, so we have to meet the following criteria. So what we're going to use is the fundamental counting principle. Um, to help us set this up. So for the first one, it says if repetition is allowed, that means that once I select a lowercase letter, I can use it again. So I, if I wanted to, my two lowercase letters could both be M, or my two lowercase letters could both be N. My digits can all be five or something like that, okay? So what we have first is we have two letters. So for this one, I'm gonna set it up where I identify what each of them are. So we have two letters, and these are both lowercase, okay? Followed by three digits, okay? So these are going to be numbers. And again, we're selecting from zero through nine, so they have to be single digit numbers only, okay? Um, followed by one uppercase letter. So the pattern for all three of the situations that I'm gonna cover are gonna be the same. Two lowercase letters, um, three numbers, one uppercase letter, but what's going to change is whether or not repetition can be allowed or other stipulations that can be imposed on a password. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this in. So since I can select two lowercase letters with repetition, that means that I have 26 choices for this first one, okay, because I have all of the letters A through Z. I have 26 letters for the second one, and then I have 10 numbers because there's zero through nine, and I have one uppercase letter, which is again 26, because there's 26 to choose from, okay? So if I multiply this out, I would have 26 times 26 times 10 to the third power times 26, which ends up giving me 17,576,000 different passwords that can be created using this criteria. Okay, so there are 17,576,000 passwords that consist of two lowercase letters followed by three single digit numbers followed by one uppercase letters where repetition is allowed. Okay, for the next one, again, the pattern is going to be the same. Two lowercase letters, three numbers, so we have two lowercase letters, followed by three numbers, followed by one uppercase letter. But this time, repetition is not allowed. Since the uppercase letter is independent of the lowercase, it is different. Um, if you used a lowercase m here, that would be different than an uppercase m here. Okay, so what we would do is we would fill in our blanks. Okay, so we have 26 letters to choose from for the first one. Well, now that I've used one letter, I'm now down one less. So I only have 25 that I can choose from for the second one. Okay, now we're getting into the numbers. So I have 10 that I can select from for the first one, but I only have nine for the next one because like if I already used five, then I can't use it again. And then I have eight for the next one. And then we have 26 uppercase letters because we haven't used any uppercase letters yet. Okay, so then we would just multiply this out to get our answer. So I would do 26 times 25 times 10 times nine times eight times 26. And we end up with 12,168, or sorry, 12 million, I can't read a number right now, 12,168,000 different possibilities. So notice by not allowing repetition, it does drastically reduce the amount of outcomes that we can have um, for passwords. And this last one has a lot of stipulations. So for this one, we still have our two lowercase letters followed by our three numbers, 
followed by our one uppercase letter, okay? Um, so with this, what we're going to do is this time repetition is allowed. So if I've used A, I can use it again. If I've used 10, I can use it again. But with this time, the first lowercase letter cannot be a vowel. And so just in case you forgot what vowels are, um, vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. So since the first lowercase letter cannot be a vowel, that means that I only have 21 choices for this first one, okay? The next letter, because I can repeat, there are no stipulations on it, I do have 26 total letters for the second one because repetition was allowed. If it said repetition was not allowed, then that would change this item here, okay? We also have the stipulation that the first number cannot be zero, so there's only nine choices for the first one, and then we would have 10 for both of these because of the fact um, that these ones do not have stipulation that we cannot use zero. So we just have the stipulation that they can repeat. And then the very last one for an uppercase letter, it says that it must be a vowel. So we only have five choices for the last one. So this one has to be a capital A, capital E, capital I, capital O, or U. So if I simplify this with all of these criteria, we're down to 200 or 2,457,000 different possibilities for a password. Okay, so with this, you can see that there's a lot of password combinations. I know a lot of times they're even more stringent than this, that you have to have at least one uppercase letter. It doesn't matter where it goes. You have to have some special characteristic. Um, it has to be between six and 14 letters. So the reason they do this is because the longer your password is, the harder it is for somebody else to guess. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need me to do additional topics, um, please let me know. Make sure you to check out all of the other videos that I have.